Welcome to the Nuclear Combust Flow and Treat Markets and IIoT Impact webinar this morning. It's in two sections. Uh, the second section is going to be utilizing the valve uh, activity as uh, an illustration of the Industrial Internet of Wisdom, which is uh, something that is going to empower the IIoT and is um, something that is uh, very apropos to the nuclear power industry who has been doing a lot of what other industries are now uh, endeavoring to do. So it will be important to understand how the nuclear power plant uh, industry is utilizing IIoT and, and maybe what limitations they have because of some of the regulatory and other activities. But we will be looking at the markets, operators, and then into all the technology. So you've got guide, control, and measure, and then you've got uh, all the different uh, uh, components. And we're only going to use a couple of them as an example here, pumps and filtration. And then we're going to go into another set of slides where we would be looking at valves. But of course, uh, we're involved and the industry is involved with a whole range of of many hundreds of components that go into a system and become uh, important and interconnecting with those suppliers is also important. So let's start with the markets. So the nuclear power plants will spend $11 billion for combust flow and treat products and services in 2018. The industry's predicted to grow at 2.3% through 2035. But part of that will be an 11% annual increase in China. And some prognosticators are saying even much more robust uh, growth. And we'll see that in the, in the next few uh, minutes. But under that plan, the expenditures for next year will be four times greater for existing plants than new plants. Guide, control, and measure hardware investments will be 10 times greater for existing plants than new ones next year. Service and remote monitoring, of course, is mostly at existing plants and will be 50 times greater for existing plants than the, the new ones that are just starting up during their first year of operation. Over 90% of the combust flow and treat expenditures will be made by fewer than 50 companies. 39% of the expenditures will be made by just three operators and one supplier. Bechtel has completed more than 74,000 megawatts of new nuclear generation capacity and has performed engineering and or construction services on more than 80% of the nuclear power plants in the U.S. and also done this for 150 plants worldwide. It employs 2,200 nuclear professionals and this includes 150 internationally recognized technical specialists who have been published widely and have participated in developing industry standards and guidelines. And that's a theme that we are going to be pursuing here, these technical specialists. And the term that we're now using uh, of uh, subject matter ultra experts. It is a, Bechtel is a major influence in 10% of the combust flow and treat decisions. Now that EDF has acquired Areva, uh, then it's uh, a very important player in addition to operating 70,000 megawatts of nuclear power in France. The company is negotiating the sale of nuclear power plants in China, India, South Africa, and Saudi Arabia. It is responsible for 20% of the nuclear combust flow and treat decisions. There are a number of other large operators. Korea Electric Power uh, has 23,000 megawatts of capacity and is operating 25 nuclear plants. And it's got five under construction. And it can, will purchase 5% of the combust flow and treat uh, products and, and services in 2018. And in the US, Exelon has consolidated nuclear power it is now operating plants with a capacity over 19,000 megawatts, and it will buy 4% of all these of these products in 2018. 
So McIlvain is forecasting the purchases by the 100 largest power companies around the world. Now, this includes nuclear as well as coal, hydro, gas turbines, and so forth. But relative to nuclear power plant uh, plants, uh, the world purchases, again, will be the $11 billion. And there's some unusual aspects like air purification and protection because of all the potential radio, radiological uh, emissions. That's substantial. But then you have the more or less standard things like the variable speed drives and motors. You've got treatment chemicals that are common to every power plant, of course, pumps, uh, various types of filtration equipment, valves, but guide, measure, and control will be a substantial uh, set of purchases. And then you have how much is going to be purchased by the individual uh, operators, or in the case of Bechtel, uh, an operator, uh, a supplier. So you've got EDF that's both an operator and a supplier, and they will account for nearly 20% of, uh, of all the uh, uh, purchases, as you can see here. And Bechtel uh, will be about half that uh, level, and uh, certainly did 220 million just on control alone. Uh, Kepco at 550 million, and Exelon at 440 million. So some of these com companies like, uh, or players like Kepco also manages and operates a coal-fired power plants. So their total purchases of these uh, uh, services and products is in, gets considerably larger. And the same, of course, of Bechtel, not only in the power industry, but in many other industries. And so I would imagine some of those uh, 150 specialists that they talk about have uh, at least uh, some skills in other industries for, for various of the products as well. <clears throat> so the, the, the forecasting that we're doing uh, is very detailed and there's a lot of different areas. And, um, but we are providing forecast for the 550 companies in all these different uh, industries, and that it is covered in our industrial IoT and remote O&M service. Uh, we also have a uh, various different valve uh, products, including one just on uh, nuclear valves and one on, uh, on all, all valves. And when it comes down to the profiles of individual power companies and project tracking and information on all their plants. Uh, this is one of a number of systems that we have called the utility tracking system that has that level of detail with a weekly alert and other features and decision systems, I might add as well. So uh, the top 10 nuclear generating countries are the US, France, China, but looking at this on a static basis for Last year, uh, China will be uh, certainly growing that total and will probably be larger than the U.S. Uh, 10 or 15 years down term. There's a couple different forecasts of the future. Uh, IEA uh, counts, uh, says China will account for about half the global power growth out to 2040, but be P is, uh, thinks that to be more closer to three quarters of the growth. But as you can see, by 2040, um, China, even at the lower number, is going to be operating more nuclear uh, power plants than the Americas or, or Europe or any other uh, region. So they have a very aggressive uh, nuclear program. And as you can see, the number of megawatts uh, by 2050 could be uh, uh, about twice the total coal-fired capacity of the United States right now and five times the uh, the nuclear uh, capacity at, at 500 uh, gigawatts. But uh, that at present, as you can see in 2016, they are smaller than uh, several of the other uh, countries. So their five-year plan uh, it was formalized in March 2016, 
and they have a pretty ambitious plan, as you can see here. But they would want to reach the target of 558 gigawatts of nuclear um, capacity and operation by 2020, plus 30 gigawatts under construction. There are a number of big players in, uh, Ch in China with the state-owned uh, National Nuclear Power uh, Company is developing and producing, among other things, small uh, floating nuclear power plants. So this is an uh, interesting twist because obviously you don't need any uh, fuel and uh, having these uh, on a, a floating nuclear uh, station, they can be uh, used as needed uh, and quickly moved. And China is at this point expecting to build uh, 20 of those floating nuclear power stations. So let's get into the operators. And these are companies that we're tracking in detail in the utility tracking system. But Exelon is the largest in the US, for instance, and then Energy and Dominion Resources, and then uh, Duke is down the way, and some of the others in terms of the number of uh, megawatts of uh, nuclear plants that they're operating. Uh, KEPCO is the sixth largest nuclear plant operator, and they do have a fairly aggressive um, program to add additional capacity, as you can see here. Uh, the Russian uh, utility uh, has uh, 35 uh, blocks of capacity right now and is active uh, also in exporting this uh, technology. And as we talked about, uh, EDF now has Areva, who makes the uh, reactors and so uh, is a definite force around the world as well as just in France, and they've got some uh, South African uh, activity as well as activity in Asia and elsewhere in the world. So they believe that India is one of the countries most suited to build nuclear. We are do, do get into the details, uh, and in this particular case, we're focused on the uh, process management uh, of, of the uh, nuclear power plants and Luminate has a top performing uh, nuclear power plant <clears throat> and it has a very sophisticated uh, uh, power optimization center. Now this has been serving the Luminate fleet of power plants for over a decade but it's being expanded to not only track the nuclear operations and the fossil operations, but it's offered as a service to any of the power plant operators, uh, such as industrial power plants in the area um, of, where, of Texas uh, and other areas where Luminant is, is active. And so the, uh, the uh, center provides immediate opportunities long-term improvements and gets into an, an analysis of performance degradation and faulty instrumentation and other industry uh, challenges. And they do, uh, for their clients, have predictive monitoring, plant startup and cost down reviews, online chemistry trending and analysis, isolation monitoring, reliability and performance for the fleet, course of action programs, uh, emergent issues, automated notifications, and of course the cyber security aspects. And here are some of the uh, components that are being monitored in a uh, reactor uh, containment system. So they predict uh, failures such as a main transformer here and make sure that that doesn't happen and do the remote M&D uh, contributions with high temperature alarms and so sorts of things. And they see the convergence of all these technologies from the alarming to the diagnostics, uh, diagnostics to the prognostics. And the Internet of Things uh, is something to which they're very uh, conscious and moving forward to take ad advantage of all, all the uh, aspects. 
and in the U.S., you certainly have the challenge of legacy fleet and then the new builds. And the new builds uh, uh, will be incorporating, obviously, more remote monitoring and diagnostics. And eventually, uh, uh, certainly over the next uh, a number of years, there'll be more activity at, at the newer plants than there will be the older plants. That's for that's for plants in general, including uh, gas turbines in the U.S. That's obviously not true for nuclear, where there's very little nuclear building in the in the U.S. Although there is replacement, as we'll get into in a minute here. And uh, so this is a little bit more information that's here. I'm not going to go into it, and we'll go on to the guide aspect of it. So now we're going from the operators and into the actual software, hardware, and so forth, and components that are in the plant. And we're starting with the guide, which really is your software and your uh, services, uh, data analytics, and so forth, that really uh, helps you uh, from take the information you're being uh, input by the sensors and the control systems. And there's a, a big potential for providing remote advice using subject matter experts. As the accompanying article points out, many nuclear experts around the world are retiring, and it will be a challenge to retain their knowledge. Furthermore, most nuclear construction is in countries where there are not many decades of nuclear experience. So the nuclear power industry can benefit from the industrial internet of wisdom, IIOW. And this is they can do this to a greater degree than any other industry and should be an IIOW leader. And we'll talk about IIOW in a minute, but basically it's a technology that's an uh, initiative that's in its infancy, certainly. Uh, and we'll go in, into that in, in more detail. But IIOW needs to address and leverage the sources of uh, various types of knowledge, codified knowledge, implicit knowledge, and then tacit non-codifiable knowledge. And that's where you need uh, people, and that's where you need to retain and exp expand the tacit non-codifiable knowledge it will be necessary to cultivate subject matter experts and then allow them to become subject matter ultra experts, which is the SMUEs and probably a term that you haven't heard before. And the nuclear industry is full of little niches where this high level of subject matter expertise is being displayed. And one of them is a mission uh, entitled the Intendant Independent Engineering Review of Instrument and Control Systems. And it was established to conduct peer reviews and to help uh, nuclear power plants around the world. So they've had six missions. And let's maybe turn to the most recent mission, uh, which was to Beijing and reviewed the nuclear safety and IC uh, platform and system uh, for a, uh, a power plant uh, in China and provided uh, insights from the expertise of all these uh, uh, people from uh, the nuclear power industry uh, around the world. So I think this is an interesting example of the sorts of things that the nuclear power industry is doing, but very few other industries are doing. The nuclear industry is adopting uh, advanced monitoring and software systems. Uh, in our various different webinars, we've been talking about a number of OSI soft uh, systems that are installed at chemical and, and uh, pharmaceutical and mining plants. but. Uh, has been adopted also in the nuclear power industry. And Exelon uh, is using the OSI soft PI system for online monitoring. And it's optimized the efficiency of its operations, maintenance, and engineering staff. And one huge uh, task has been automating data collection uh, where the engineers might have been exposed to 
uh, radiological uh, contaminants previously. There are a number of uh, data management systems uh, for the effluent and other um, uh, technologies and processes within the uh, nuclear power industry. One company that's been very active uh, in providing knowledge as well as systems has been Curtis Wright. And so it supplies complete turnkey monitoring and plant processing computer systems. Having supplied systems and products to, to all of the nature, uh, nation's nuclear utilities and to many non-nuclear power plants. Over the last 20 years, it has delivered more than 35 plant process and related large computer systems to nuclear facilities. Uh, these have been mostly in the United States. And then 300 thermal performance monitoring systems uh, to various different utilities around the world. And then uh, FAMOS is an integrated suite of products for them, monitoring, analyzing, and optimizing plant performance. And uh, they have instrumentation for measuring friction, shock, and energy shifts. And then they have uh, various software uh, to provide graphics and displays and so forth. They also have some very unique uh, uh, digital uh, activities that wouldn't be used possibly in other industries like their electronic personal history questionnaire but they do have an environmental uh, quality power suite as well and they have uh, things like condition uh, monitoring using the stress wave systems and uh, their tracking systems with famous are shown here they are you know, re reducing operating costs and, and maintenance costs and improving reliability, managing risk, and of course, providing uh, safe operations. So the uh, Curtis Wright is a, is a big player in all of, uh, of this. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, and then, but there are other people, uh, obviously uh, all the big uh, automation companies are involved here. But what you're also seeing is uh, activity by Asian companies. And the Holisys uh, is providing automation and IT for a number of uh, uh, nuclear power plants in China and elsewhere, and also in Southeast uh, East Asia. So these are newer developments. The Fukushima, uh, disaster you know involved a number of increases in monitoring and uh, process uh, control management and certainly the nuclear power industry uh, sees uh, IIoT and remote O&M as a major uh, solution for some of the risks here and part of that even is remotely operated uh, robotic vehicles to do work if there is a disaster and considerable progress is being made on developing uh, those vehicles and Savannah River um, National Laboratory is heavily involved with that. The US power uh, nuclear power plants and some in, in some in other countries where the plants are being shut down have some unique challenges and the long range asset management program of Exelon involves finding uh, the lowest cost alternative for a plant that is only going to be operating for a fixed uh, amount of time, you know, 10 years or 15, 20 years in the future, but isn't going to operate 40 or, or 50 years. So they have had some um, replacement programs that uh, a number of uh, plants are shown on the left here, and they have uh, ones under underway at uh, Limerick, Nine Mile Island, Peach Bottom, and possibly Fitzpatrick. And what they uh, have found is that virtualization uh, is a obsolescence mitigation strategy 
that may not be best if you're building a new plant, but it does turn out to be the way that you can inexpensively uh, upgrade your existing automation uh, software. So the um, Exelon uh, has made this presentation of what they've been doing in this, in this uh, regard and how they are using virtualization, how they've implemented it at Oyster Creek, how it's applied to each server, and then how they're going to utilize this su success for uh, future uh, plants. And there's a, a number of advantages, uh, mainly the, the financial advantage, but also uh, many of the convenient ways of uh, implementing it that uh, make this an attractive uh, approach. And uh, so, so there, we, we've now moved on actually to cloud systems. And the only um, point I wanted to make here is the nuclear power plants have concerns about uh, security-wise about cloud-based systems that you wouldn't have uh, in some other types of plants. And so this makes it more complex. On the other hand, uh, there are a number of vendors and with the federal government uh, uh, and being uh, supportive of all this, you are getting at least uh, uh, 78 or different vendors that do offer, a, offer, offer cloud-based systems uh, for the nuclear power industry. And there are advantages in private cloud systems, uh, and there's a disadvantages in them as, as well that all need to be resolved. The bottom line uh, for nuclear as well as the other power industries is the complexity. And in the case of nuclear power, the loss of, of experts. And so uh, EPRI has uh, implemented a subject matter expert program and with the idea that you need to provide systems to supplement and maybe even replace some of the expertise that's leaving the industry. And so it's identify the experts, develop plans to capture their uh, data and then implement those plans. And the McElvain company has some similar ideas, and we'll get into those uh, in a minute. So in the control, we, we now we're moved on to control here, and there are companies like Yokogawa have, who have integrated solutions uh, for monitoring and control from data acquisition to controllers to the various process management software. Uh, you do have very specialized uh, uh, monitoring, uh, such as the piping uh, systems, where you're actually uh, measuring the thermal expansion, temperature, pressure, vibration, and even the weight of the pipes, uh, as a, as per the example at the Walsong power plant by M&P. Arriva, who we've talked about before, does have monitoring and control systems and has three uh, uh, levels, as you can see here. All the electricals are important, and someone like Eaton, who has been involved since the 1970s with its Westinghouse, Cutler Hammer, and other legacy products, uh, has supplied them to more than half the commercial uh, nuclear power plants in the U.S. and Canada, and points out the reliability, efficiency, and safety of their products and even gets into the substations. So we, most of our webinars have spent uh, uh, quite a bit of time on the measurement of all these things, but a lot of them are similar in the uh, nuclear power industry. You've got your, your boiler feed water and your uh, air emissions and all these different uh, things that you do have to, uh, to monitor. But uh, uh, radiation monitoring is a special uh, requirement in uh, nuclear industry, and Thermal Scientific uh, does have extensive systems with, with software uh, that do allow you to 
use gamma uh, radiation detectors and to understand the problems and to act on them. Uh, pumps, again, uh, just one more example. You can see here, uh, you know, at this one power plant where a large number of pumps have been supplied by KSB. KSB is one of several uh, pump companies specialized in the nuclear industry, and they have about 5,000 uh, pumps and 150,000 valves uh, in more than 200 nuclear power plants. There are uh, some suppliers such as MHI who provide both the plants and some of the components. And MHI, for instance, uh, provides the steam generators and many of the uh, reactor feed vessels, many of the other components in the complete systems. And then you can see on the left, they have a, a number of pumps for the various different service in the primary loop and they have the pumps uh, yeah, that are needed in the secondary loop. And they're exporting uh, those uh, pumps and other things to uh, uh, on 85% of all their uh, plants that are going in it, they have these components exported uh, from Japan. So uh, filtration is, is both water and air is highly uh, necessary for safety reasons and CAMFIL has been doing this for many different decades with their high efficiency filter systems and then they have the combi filter which you get the gas capture uh, contaminants as well as your actual filter contaminants and there's some things like glove boxes which uh, uh, allow you to change filters and, and do sorts of uh, all sorts of activities that are, are required when you get these highly contaminated uh, pro products that you're capturing. Uh, AAF has provided HEPA filter products and uh, filter houses and cooling co coils to the nuclear industry uh, and fuel processing plants for decades. And the uh, safety systems were developed by AAF for uh, Three Mile Island Reactor, and uh, they operated successfully during and after the accident. And AAF specializes in air cleaning systems that handle toxic, hazardous, and radioactive gas streams safely. And this bag in, bag out system is something that is not only needed in the nuclear power industry, but any place you've got uh, hazardous chemicals, the pharmaceutical industry where you'd have uh, vi viable uh, microbes and things that might be captured to be able to remove filters and replace them without uh, risk to the maintenance people is extremely important. So water uh, filtration in nuclear power plants, you've got ion exchange uh, polishing systems, uh, and, and Dow is a supplier of those ion exchange uh, systems, I of the exchange resins. Paul has uh, a number of filters um, for the industry, and you need them to do things like optimize the visual visual clarity in the fuel pool. pool. And then uh, they have rad waste filtration systems for the decontamination of liquid rad waste. Evoqua is uh, active in this uh, area, and uh, membrane filtration has greatly in improved the water quality at the Point Beach nuclear power plant. The plant has significantly reduced its operating cost, increased the reliability of water treatment, and reduced the waste associated with the water treatment system. And then uh, Veolia. Uh, provides complete systems for radioactive liquid waste uh, uh, contamination removal. And where there is an uh, uh, incident like Fukushima, they put in a system to remove the cesium. So that being the case there, um, we're going to end this show. And uh, we are going to get out of our slideshow here and uh, home and
go on to the next uh, uh, set of slides, which is a valve example here. <clears throat> and um, so what we're going to do is use uh, nuclear valves as an example of the industrial internet of wisdom. IIOW utilizes the data analytics provided by IIoT and provides the interconnection between end users, suppliers, and subject matter experts to create the total cost of ownership analyses, but more importantly, create new products with lower total cost of ownership. The interconnections need to be as prolific in IIOW as in IIoT, and they include the following. Assistance to the supplier to understand the markets and opportunities. In this case, we're using valves as an example, and McIlvain does have uh, extensive uh, services in this uh, area on both jet valves for other applications and for nuclear valves, as well as the IIoT and remote monitoring of valves. So that is one type of IIOW, but another one is that supplier personnel in each product group and geography need to be interconnecting with peers around each of the 1,000 largest purchasers of combust flow and treat products and services. And to assist uh, them, McIlvain is providing the forecast for each component in each one of the thousand purchasers, uh, and specifically the, the large operators of nuclear power plants as well, as well as the EPCs like Bechtel and the consultants. Another uh, interconnection need is owner oper operator personnel in each plant interconnecting around processes and products used in more than one of the plants. You take something like boiler feed water or water intake, every type of power plant has similar uh, demands. All players need to interconnect with each other in new ways. Uh, you have user controlled groups expanding scope and they need to create decision systems and through digital technologies become international. Uh, so suppliers with the lowest total cost of ownership uh, can benefit from sponsoring this user-based activity. But these suppliers can also uh, provide user groups of their own and uh, when they're focused on total cost of, uh, of ownership, a group of suppliers that do provide products with the lowest total cost will have reason to band together to promote these groups. Associations uh, can also expand their role to help create decision systems and periodic webinars to integrate with their annual meetings. And some of these associations, uh, uh, such as the Filtration Association, are around products. But some of them are by individual uh, users. And uh, this provides another unique way for interconnection. So, AEP has several forums uh, with all the uh, suppliers exhibiting and, and communicating with uh, conference-type programs. Uh, Saudi Arabia Basic Industries uh, has a huge biannual conference and exhibition with more than 1,000 ex exhibitors uh, focused on the petrochemicals and, and steel and other uh, areas of activity that SABIC uh, is involved in. So the creation of subject matter uh, ultra experts comes from all this other activity that provides the decision systems and allows tomorrow's experts to master, master the massive uh, total cost of ownership data generated from IIoT. The SMUE will need to be very focused and to continually utilize and help create the decision systems around its specialty. The suppliers of high performance products with the lowest total cost of ownership 
will benefit from the SMUE valid, validation of their claims. So the more you get insightful experts, the better off the suppliers with the better products will be. So again, we were talking about the uh, assistance to the supplier, and he needs to forecast the markets, analyze regulations, competitors, technology, and he needs to understand all these processes with flow diagrams and so forth on each valve. So for instance, uh, we have a website just on for nuclear power plant suppliers. There's hundreds of pages just on who are the certified suppliers, information on each of the valves that's used, regulations, as you can see here, information on all the markets, and then the applications with all the process flow diagrams, and then uh, details on who all the uh, nuclear utilities are, and then with uh, we have a utility uh, alert every week with new power plant activity. And the devil is in the details. It's getting into each each valve and where it's located, how it's used, and then even down to how many of them there are, how many gate and globe valves are there in a particular location and what are their sizes and so forth there. Same thing for safety valves and and then understanding all these process uh, flow diagrams and just where a throttle valve or a main a steam regulation valve uh, would be uh, utilized in the secondary systems. <clears throat> so the owner operator personnel in each plant and in each role need to interconnect around processes and products used in more than one of the plants. So we're saying that each major power company should have a website and system similar to the system created for Berkshire Hathaway Energy. In this case, uh, they don't have nuclear plants, but they do have all the rest of the uh, types of power plants. And the system for them has information on each of their facilities. It's got alerts, uh, and it also, again, relies on uh, two very detailed uh, decision systems, one for their uh, coal-fired power plants and another one for their gas turbines. And the interaction, we believe, needs to be uh, uh, by the suppliers as well as the end users around this system. So the suppliers can become uh, sponsors of this uh, system. And they will find that their sales, service, engineering, and manufacturing people involved in all these different uh, processes uh, and all these different states, as you can see, uh, BHE is involved in Iowa all the way out to uh, Washington, and they all have uh, some common needs and some unique needs. But all this integration from obviously lubrication is used everywhere, uh, needs to be interconnected. And one way is uh, that is done is with the four knowledge needs, which are alerts, answers, analysis, and advancement. By the same token, uh, this interconnection is taking place by a number of different groups within the BHE, including the engineering and planning group, maintenance and operation, procurement uh, groups, and again, around all these different products, all these different locations, and um, all these processes. Then uh, networking directories uh, are part of this feature too. So any company in the world involved in combust flow and treat is uh, accessible uh, to BHE and to the suppliers. And uh, webinars are a unique way to uh, interconnect. And so one particular problem, which was a $700 million problem for BHE, uh, involved possibly putting in selective catalytic reduction at Huntington and Hunter, and it would have uh, been very, very expensive. But uh, about 80 different people were on these webinars, and it turns out that uh, there is an alternative due to some very unique aspects of the NOx emissions at these two plants. And ozone injection, uh, which has not been used in power plants, 
uh, turns out to be uh, uh, economic remedy here at these two plants. So uh, that along with combustion optimization and a number of other innovations will save several hundred million dollars for uh, BHE. But um, this would not have happened uh, without the uh, benefit of the wise crowd input and decisions. So global sourcing is now a reality and whether it's BHE or any one of these other plants, they're all moving to uh, global sourcing and purchasing and therefore the ability to evaluate the lowest total cost of ownership. And as Jeffrey Yelmelt uh, said a, a couple of years ago, the industry, power near, industry needs to develop the hurry up pace uh, demonstrated in, in Silicon Valley. So from a supplier's perspective, the evaluation based on total cost of ownership promises higher margins while, while global purchasing offers the opportunity for large contracts and the ability to provide service for the fleet. And the nuclear industry could be a leader in all this uh, and uh, so should be uh, a lot of attention should be paid to it. The, in the case of BHE, the uh, four A's are being provided by an intelligence uh, uh, system. I won't go in. Then there's recordings and various other things that I won't go into there. Um, so, but let's go on to the broader uh, discussion of decision systems. And someone like Vilan, uh, who supplies uh, valves for the nuclear uh, power industry in an extensive way, has uh, been at the forefront of some of the testing and safety issues and has been working with you know, agencies such as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, EPRI has been very much involved in, in all this uh, and then with some of the larger uh, companies like Duke Energy and so forth. So these are one types of, uh, of collaborations. The, uh, uh, and the things that need to be in these systems are things like here's a, a, um, a valve failure that just uh, uh, occurred a few weeks ago and NRC has already launched a special inspection and published information on it. So this is very useful to the industry, but it needs to be um, uh, communicated in maybe a possibly more sophisticated decision system. You have some very interesting examples of niche user groups, and we believe that these niche user groups uh, should be prolific in many other industries. Uh, so you have just a motor operated valve users group, and uh, our thinking there is that a lot of the information and wisdom that they are generating could be used by motor operated valve operators in oil and gas and other industries. But they have a, an annual conference uh, uh, that involved the motor operated valves and air operated valves and fluor, fluid leak management in uh, compressed air and uh, there's even one on pump users and so forth there. So here's one that has some of the uh, some of these groups meeting in in January, but in just this next November, uh, Rockwell is holding their process solutions uh, user group uh, meeting. So this will be before the uh, MOV, but uh, obviously too late to do anything on it now. But wouldn't it be nice next year? if there were information that Rockwell was providing on motor operated valves and the intelligent motor control information such as uh, they'll be providing in November and it were integrated uh, in a way that could be used um, by the attendees at the MOV uh, conference in January where Rockwell will also be a uh, participant. So uh, the motor operated valve users group, uh, you know, is doing a useful uh, analyses such as uh, uh, approving the, uh, the limit torque uh, life, um, the actuators in the uh, MOVs. Uh, 
Crane will be a, a, an exhibitor at the MOV uh, uh, conference and exhibition coming up. And um, so they have a number of, uh, of offerings and not only the valves, but also a whole assist uh, testing system uh, that includes software to save a lot of time and, and provide uh, more uh, reliable uh, measurement of the valve's uh, performance. So the NRC is a major uh, player and they, uh, they participate in the user meetings and uh, provide insights on their current issues and answers and do provide summaries, for instance, that they, they did in 2016 of motor operated valve problems that occurred during the period. Uh, EPRI has a performance prediction methodology that uh, has been endorsed by uh, NRC. But you also need new ways to uh, look at all these problems and issues. And so a decision system really does need to take into account uh, all the newer options and to make sure that the suppliers are having the details to possibly implement them. And in this case, you've got a, uh, a gentleman at Grenoble University in France there who has uh, uh, using uh, electrical supply voltages and currents to indicate the uh, faults as opposed to at the valve measurements. And this remote testing uh, certainly uh, makes it uh, uh, safer than actually when you can't, you, and you can't even get into the con radioactively contaminated areas anyway. So these are some of the uh, innovations that need to be incorporated. And in summary, really the message that we're getting across today is that the nuclear power industry has many of the same problems that other industries do. The interconnection of subject matter experts, the use of decision systems, and in general, a uh, whole industrial internet of, of wisdom empowerment of IIOW, of IIOT is going to be desirable. And we'd like to thank you for paying attention today and participating. And we look forward uh, uh, to the next uh, webinar on October 8th, where we'll be talk to, talking uh, combustion uh, flue gas treatment. And this will be for power plants uh, and waste incinerators and other uh, industries that burn solid waste to generate the power or steam. Thank you again. This is Bob McElvain signing off for today.